Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Hope you're all doing well. I am really doing what I'm doing good. I'm excited. I'm just pumped. We got Milwaukee pipeline coming up next week. I have a lot of things that I have to get done before the weekend or through the weekend and some other things I'll tell you about a little bit later in this. And Oh, Hey, Jeremy, just want to see you stopped in first. So thanks for stopping by. Hope you're doing well too. And one thing I was going to mention, I did learn a little bit last week. I went live. This is the first time for me going live at, at my, at a desktop setting. I've done it with my phone. So I learned a little bit. And one thing I noticed when I went through last week after the video, I clipped out the first like minute and a half, that intro music. And when I do that, I understand that it gets rid of the live chat replay. So uh, Jeremy was asking me later on in the comments, like uh, the next day, why that wasn't there and I believe that's the reason so I'm not going to trim it people can like scrub ahead they can look and do that but I think there might be some people might want to read the comments so I'll leave that there so um, let's see yeah so we have four new tools to review or that were announced this week and I'm going to get into that in just a second I just made some notes. I have just a lot of juggling a lot of things, as I mentioned. So you're going to see me just jotting or looking over at what I jotted down. So, all right. Yeah. So let's um, take a look and see what is new this week in regards to tools. All right. Let's try this. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Technology is great when it's working. Okay, so Milwaukee announced Monday morning. This is the very first thing they announced, the new M18 half-inch router. So this is something that is, they, they had a, a smaller one, I believe the quarter-inch collet size. And this one, I'm going to go through the details in a few minutes. I do like, if you look at this picture here, you can see how the router is hooked up to their track saw the, or the tracks. So what they're doing is getting a nice straight line with that. So I'll show you some of those accessories. Let's see, I have to go over here. Okay. So this is, this was actually a little bit surprising. So if you can see there the price, so they offer it as a bare tool for 349. That's a price range I'm used to hearing from Milwaukee, but for a router, they have a kit and that's $5.99. So that's, that's for a router. I'm the last one I bought was a plunge router. It was several years ago. And I just seen that $5.99 is it's, a, it's up there, but it is an investment A a good plunge router or router is very nice to have. And not having that cord is amazing. When I use a router, most of the time, if I'm like, if it's not real cold, I'll go outside and that way, cause there's a lot of sawdust from it and a lot of noise. So instead of having that sawdust fly everywhere, I like to go outside and it's nice not having to drag a cord around. So 
don't know what you guys think about that, but that's my take on it. So, all right, so looking here at the saw, I'll just read through some of the details. Let's kind of skim over a little bit. So you can go through and read about it. Um, so as I mentioned, this press release just came out Monday. So it can generate up to 2.25 peak horsepower and uh, up to 225 lineal feet of runtime per charge. And I believe this comes with in the kit with the six amp hour battery, I believe. So that's the numbers are getting with that. And I have a video, I think that's gonna, it's about a minute and 10 seconds. So we're gonna go to that in a second. Let's quick look at some specs. The video is gonna really show a lot about it and help explain it better than I can here. So I have some other close up pictures that you can see right here that are coming up as well too. So the maximum RPM 25,000, minimum speed 12,000. So it does have a variable speed adjustment, it has a fine tuning dial a variable, or sorry, it's called a micro adjust dial. A spindle lock, yes, fix, it has the fixed base or the plunge, so. All right, so let's see if this works. This is the video, and let me know in the comments if the sound is okay. Milwaukee half inch router was durable, it was consistent, very powerful. Overall, a great experience. With a 6.0 battery, it has all the power of a quarter router. We really pushed it pretty hard through our sheathing. It wouldn't stall out. I mean, you could push the tool as hard as you wanted and it would hold up. The M18 half inch router has a ton of adjustability and maintains its accuracy throughout the course of the day. The hand strap on the M18 router is great. It just allows me to grip it and rip it through any material that I've got. Smooth operation, no jumping, no vibration, consistent cuts, consistent feeds. Leaves nothing to be desired. I really haven't found anything that it can't eat up yet. The best thing I can say about it is we have a shelf full of corded routers and this is the one that I grab if I have the choice. All right, I'm excited. I'm hoping at the pipeline event, they'll have that there for us to test out. I'm sure they will. So here's a close up look. This is the fixed base right there. You can just see. And here is the plunge base. So I don't know if any of you have ever used a plunge router. Years ago, um, <clears throat> I was in a business as, in the modular home business and we use a plunge router quite often where the two floors come together in the two different modules. Sometimes we have more than two modules. <clears throat> where they come together though, we often need to have a router to go through and sometimes open that up a little bit. So where a lot of times carpet pad and then carpet would go on top of that seam right there. So the router was really handy for getting that all nice and even so we could put a nice strip in there and make it look after you put the carpet down, it looks like one continuous floor. You'd never know that it, the home came in two halves or even more, like three or four modules. So this is the kit. So you do get the plunge base, the fixed base, the six amp hour battery, and the rapid charger, and the bag too. So it's really nice being able to keep that all together. So I'm wondering if you guys are watching this or maybe somebody watching later on, would you like to see this in a packout option, some type of a box. So instead of having a bag to tote around, you can just hook the box up to your packouts to roll to the job site. So let me know, please. I'd like to hear what you guys think. And then this right here is the, I have to make sure I'm calling it the right thing, the, the guide rail adapter. So this will hook up to the router and then you can put it in the tracks. So if you look at this image right here, you can see how it'll just slide perfect in there. So there's actually last week, Jeremy had a question. He was asking me about the table saw and how it's different than a track saw. It's actually, that's a good question. I The very first time that I seen a track saw, the person was explaining from the manufacturer was explaining how a track saw is 
almost available to replace a table saw. We tune a router and a track saw, you can do a lot of the same things. So you'll see in this next image, if you're using this and you're trying to run like a dado stack blade, these are some things I, I'm actually thinking about making a video comparing the two different things together. This, the track saw and router is a much safer option than the table saw. And you can see right here, they're just running a router bit and instead of running like a dado in your table saw, you could do something like this and get some really nice results. So I'm hoping to have this on the channel sometime pretty soon. I believe it was September was the release date on it. And then the next day, Rigid announced the M18 Fuel half inch router. Whoops. All right, um, sorry, I was just noticing that I wrote half inch router, but it, it, this might be a quarter inch. I believe this is not a half, the collet, I don't think it, it runs. I may have to put a comment down below. I don't, I'm not sure if I can see it fast enough. I thought when I was reading earlier that it said it was, it ran the quarter inch bits. So, okay, so we'll just take a look at some of the specs and maybe I'll come across it so I can verify for sure what's going on. So this has 50% more power than the previous model. So Rigid does have another route, router. This one, like the other one's more power than corded. And this has up to 40% reduced vibration with premium die cast body and rubber overmold. Has up to 250 feet per charge. And that is on their two amp hour, uh, let's see, two amp hour max output battery. And yeah, so it has a, okay, now I see it down a little bit further underneath the spindle lock. It does have a quarter inch collet size. So I did confirm that. The one thing that this has that people really like, and I mentioned this last week, Rigid has their lifetime service agreement. So if you register it within 90 days, you'll qualify for that. People really like having that. So included with this, this is a tool only, but this is what you get with it. You get the router, a collet wrench, a dust chute, an edge guide, and a fixed D-shaped base. So I was looking to see if they offered some type of, I have to go look, <laughs> guide rail adapter. I can never remember that exact term. I didn't see that with rigid. So this, let me uh, go over here. Sorry. I noticed last week I left that arrow sitting there where I should be using it. So this is an edge guide right here. So it's... This does not hook into their their tracks that they have. So maybe at some point they will introduce something like that. So then you can hook a dust extractor up to it. That really makes quite a big difference. I just prefer going outside. Even if I'm using a battery powered dust collection system, it's just nice having keeping that sawdust to a minimum. And this is right here, the uh, plastic cover that goes over that to help contain the dust. All right, so here we have our micro dial adjustment, and then this is the variable speed right here. And let's see, oh, Danny Hector, Super Chat, four ninety nine. dollars Hey, Mark, what more do you, do you use this year? All right, thanks. Appreciate it, Danny. I, um, let's see, well, I'm actually, at my house, I have a Cub Cadet Ultima, the... Lap bar. The ZT1 is still my favorite. I'm really liking that. That's a really great homeowner model. You'll see that at Home Depot, uh, Tractor Supply, similar places to your local dealers. And then where I work, I have an X mark and I maintain a lawn there. And the engine just pretty much died on it. So we're going to put a new Kawasaki engine after. Um, there isn't an hour meter on it, but that's also one of the other mowers that I been running this week, or well, I ran it last week until I brought it in to get a new engine for it. Uh, James Clark, yes, a pack out option would be great. Track saw comes, <laughs> all right, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, and, uh, Jeremy, yes, I do enjoy mowing lawns. There's nothing like the smell of fresh cut grass. As a matter of fact, I did see in my local store, there's 
a soap company that has all these detergents. They had a thing out this spring that was fresh cut grass as a scent. So I, I definitely like it. It's a good chance to just kind of get away from everything and just enjoy being out in the sunshine. So, all right, so here's a look. So instead of with the rigid router, being able to hook it up to a track and with the, um, with the adapter, you can put a, here they have a, looks like a two by two board, like a straight edge of some sort. So that is a D shape you can see. So they could run against the straight edge and get really good results. It's not gonna be quite the same as having the track, but I, you know, the price difference is gonna be quite a bit. So I would say for the homeowner and semi pro, this is gonna be a really good option. If you wanna get into that really higher end fine detail then with the Milwaukee and that track system, I think that's gonna be your best option. Or that's how I would look at who it's marketed to. Okay, and then after those two items, the third item this week is the Ryobi work light. So this one, I have to refer to my notes here a minute. I do have the details as well too. Oh, let's see, sorry. All right, so this is 3000 lumens. It has two by mount options. So let's say you're working at a construction site and you have two by of some sort going across or like in your garage with just a stud wall or stud wall somewhere in a, even a construction site. You can clamp this to that. There's other mounting options, which I will show you here in just a second. So this has three high and low, low is five or high, medium, low. Medium is 1600 lumens, low 550. And this is the other place that you can mount. It's compatible with the Ryobi Link wall and mobile storage systems. There's a picture right down here. I, it ended up getting cut out and it showed some guys that were working in a construction trailer. And it looked like they had that light on top of a camera tripod. So I'm guessing there might be that. Yeah, okay, now I see it. Yep, tripod mounting compatible with built-in quarter inch dash 20 insert so I, yeah i didn't yeah sometimes you might see a tripod for like a laser level like a rotary laser sometimes those are a bigger size but um yeah it's handy having a tripod around i, I have <laughs> just being into content creation i have probably like four or five tripods just laying around my garage so it, it would be handy for that And then it has some integrated hooks and keyholes for additional mounting options. Up to 16 hours of runtime on low, and that's with their four amp hour lithium battery. <clears throat> has a 360 degree rotating head with direct, oh, to the direct light exactly where you need it. All right, so here's a picture. This one I mentioned, the two by clamping, that's what we have going on right here. So they're working like on a some type of remodel or construction project. So you can just see how it clamps on there <clears throat> or just right on the floor too. So I used to have those, let's see, I believe they're called halogen lights. They're like 500 Watts. And those things would get so hot. It was just crazy. So the led lights like this, this, just this shape reminds me a little of that. When I would work in crawl spaces in the winter time, I would usually bring a couple of those lights in there and it was amazing those 500 waters, how much heat they put out. It would definitely warm that up in just a short time. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, Jeremy, I see your comment about the saw. So we're getting to that. That's a good comment, good timing. So this was the fourth thing. I was planning on just bringing in this live stream. I was gonna go live either Monday night or Tuesday night. <clears throat> and it ended up, there was like another tool review or tool launch the next day and then then the tile saw. So yeah, we had four different ones. So this one, I'll just get right into some of the details for you. So you can get this as a tool only for 199, or you can get the kit for 250. Well, the kit is the battery and charger for 259. That's the four amp hour battery. Um, let me just see. Yeah, the high performance battery and charger. So. Instead of me looking at my notes, it's just helpful for me. <laughs> I should just look at the screen. 
So yeah, you can get 100 lineal feet per charge over one and five eighths cut capacity at 90 degrees and it can cut inch and a half pavers in a single pass. So this would be really handy. So like somebody that's looking at doing some type of wet tile cutting or paver cutting, instead of getting a wet tile saw, sometimes those are pretty big and difficult to store. I've reviewed the rigid one, I think sometime last fall. And it does take up a lot of space when you go to store it. But you know, then again, it does have a 10 inch blade on it. But for some of those smaller things, this right here is a really good solution, I, in my opinion. So it has the industry leading 20.5 ounce onboard water tank for dust reduction. And I'm just gonna skip ahead. So I'm gonna go back to that list real quick to read some more of the specs. So you can just see right up here. So that's the tank that they're talking about. If you don't want to run the tank and you just want to collect the dust through a probably like a HEPA vac, that's what I would recommend. I think you would still need to have a, a 95 mask as well, too, if you're going to be silica compliant. If you just want to be safe, I'd still wear a mask. The When you get the wet tile, there's really no dust because if you're adjusting the flow of the water, you should have no dust at all. But it's a little more messy trying to clean it up. So here's, yeah, the look. These items right here is what you would get. And let me just go back a second. Oh, this is cool. It's got an integrated LED light for increased visibility. I'm sure if it's getting a little bit dusty or just low light situations, it's definitely nice to have that. Three year manufacturer's warranty. And this, yeah, it has, I'll just read what's included a 12 inch water supply hose, the tank as I mentioned, a five inch diamond cutting blade, arbor wrench and owner's manual. So on my channel, I reviewed some different high end diamond blades like Blades Direct. I would be curious to see how something like that would work in something like this. I've also have, um, I'm just starting to test out some the cat blades like the Caterpillar bulldozer brand. They are in the blade business as well too. So I have a 10 inch blade that I'm get, putting to the test at the moment. And I believe, yeah, that is it. All right. So yeah, Jeremy, looking at your question, are the Ryobi's expensive? And compared to some other brands, they're more the entry level. So they really cater and market to like the homeowners, the DIY, they do have their HP line, which is more towards the pros or prosumers. And those are more expensive and they tend to be brushless. Okay, let me <laughs> go back over here. Next screen. Uh, oh, you know what? Yeah, sorry, I went to the wrong one. Okay, so yeah, the next thing. Um, next week, I was just going to talk about what's coming up. I have the Milwaukee Pipeline event that is going to be taking place on Tuesday. I just saw an announcement how many tools are releasing and I forget. So let me know what you would like to see there. Or if there's something that you have a question for a product manager, let me know. I'm going to be busy talking to a lot of different people and just asking a lot of questions. So if you have something, I would yeah, definitely like to be able to help you guys out or just answer some of those questions or have those questions answered. And oh yeah, so I've been really busy. I was on vacation last week. And then as I mentioned, I'm going to Milwaukee next week. So I've just had a little bit of time in between. I'm trying to get some videos done. So I have the footage. This is gonna be tomorrow's video. This is by Milwaukee. This is their, I don't know if you've seen this. This was actually at their second pipeline event last year. Let me open it up a minute. This thing is, yeah, it's probably pretty loud in the microphone right there. This thing is serious. It has a lot of power. It really comes through for all your pruning needs. I believe it goes up to an inch and a quarter size. Let's set that down there. So stay tuned. I think that will probably be out by probably like early afternoon, late morning, somewhere in there. So uh, yeah. And then if there's some other things that you'd like to see on the channel, I had somebody... A couple weeks ago, they said they would like to see a particular, or they asked me if, they, if I could review a particular Ryobi tool, and I 
looked into it and that's something that I have now and I'm in the process of reviewing it. So sometimes when you ask me for things like that, I can get it up on my channel. So I'm excited to have that, which will probably be sometime next week. And then I have one other thing that I can't talk about yet. And that video is it's something completely new. And unfortunately, I, I just have to tease it a little bit, but it's something I'm very excited about. I haven't tried it out yet. It's a new tool to the market and it's like a perfect fit for my channel. And I think that's gonna be going on my channel next week. So I will let you know about that. So yeah, if there's anything else. Oh, uh, all right. So yeah, I missed that question. Okay, so you're wondering the difference between the N95 mask and a respirator. Um, yeah, I'm, that I, I'm not really an expert on that. I just know like with silica dust, you need an N95 mask. There are some other... I don't know what they're called respirators. They're the like the painter's masks that have like the two like canisters on the side. There's some different ones that you can get depending on like if you're just working around insulation or if you're working around paint fumes, then you get the heavier duty ones with more filters. The pink ones, those are for like the light sawdust and like insulation fiberglass. That I really can't stand working around insulation. It gets really itchy, but you see all those little particles of fiberglass floating in the air and I never want to take a chance breathing that stuff in. I have before and had a scratchy throat for like a week. It was not fun. And so now I, I'm not really a fan of the N95 masks. I, I'll wear that if that's all I have, but I tend to use that. Um, I think it's by 3M. It's a, that I believe that's called a respirator. So hopefully that answers your question. If you're looking between the two, I would say spend the money, go for that respirator. You can get replaceable cartridges it's very easy to breathe. It doesn't feel like you're like all sweaty in there, <laughs> like the N95 masks. Okay, so the M12 planer. Um, yeah, I'll have to look at that, James. Um, I yeah, I reviewed a rigid planer a couple years ago, but um, yeah, I'll look into that. That's was something that I'm really curious to see what type of power they have. And speaking of power, I'm really curious to see at the Milwaukee event, there's people that are, oh, yeah. Hey, Rob and Sarah, thanks for stopping by. Yes, you will see me at Pipeline. So, yeah, sorry, I missed your um, production crew the other night. I was on vacation, and then I got back and just doing a lot of things. But, yes, I will be arriving and seeing you Monday, probably Monday afternoon, Monday night, something like that. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, so the M12 planer. So yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting back to Milwaukee. I'm excited to see what they have to announce as far as the batteries go. A lot of people are talking. Last year, the talk was the track saw what it's going to look like. This year, their patent on the battery, the lithium ion battery has expired. It's going to expire. So there's some, there's a lot of anticipation on what they're going to do next. So will they have like a a stack cell battery, the pouch stack cell, or if they do, will they have adapters? There's just a lot of things that are unknown. I'm not really the expert on the batteries, but I'm, yeah, just kind of waiting to see. It's hard for me to really speculate, but um, yeah. Yeah, a new battery series, that would be great. I'm something more powerful. I'd like to see, I'm curious too, like if it would be just the M18s or the M12, what they would do, but. Um, anyways, yeah, I know Rob and Sarah, the tool show, they're going to be going live. I'm going to be going live at some point uh, that day on Tuesday. So look, I'm sure you'll see your phones blowing up with a lot of different people from Milwaukee. So yeah, it's going to be exciting. So yeah, anyways, I think, um, this wraps it up. I'm going to work on editing the rest of my video that's going to be out tomorrow. So thanks everybody for stopping by and then check back next week. As I mentioned on Tuesday, that's where I'll be going live again. So have a good night, everybody. We'll see you next time.